All right. Good morning once again. And let's get over to the phones because we are joined right now by the chairman of the County Board of Legislators, Ken Jenkins. Good morning, sir. Good morning, TJ, and good morning, Winston. All right. So um, uh, it's, it's your neck of the woods. I know you're, you're, you're a Yonkers man. Uh, down your way is Mount Vernon. We have some uh, real uh, fireworks happening in, in democratic politics, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's really uh, disconcerting. Uh, what do you make of this, uh, this uh, KKK kerfuffle um, that, that's happening down around your way? Uh, first, let me ask you, do, do you know any of these principals? Do you know Andre Bailey, Maria Caraballo, or Damaris Monet? Um, I actually do not know them. I think I might know Andre. Uh -huh. uh, but the other three folks I do not know. Right. I certainly know Damon Jones. Yeah, yeah, Damon Jones. And you got this. Who's this Sam Rivers character? Do you know him? Sam Rivers as well. Sam Rivers, you know, is a, a person that's just been out there working and uh, uh, being a reporter and uh, uh, blogger and that kind of thing. <laughs> He's out there all right. <laughs> way out there. I mean, first of all, there, there's no reason, a rationale um, to suggest and to, you know, depict people with any kind of, of, um, uh, of derogatory uh, images. It's just right. ridiculous. We had this happen um, a couple of years ago with a Rockland County um, judicial candidate. You know, there is no place for this um, in the political spectrum. Yeah. And, you know, if you're, your advocates or your friends or your supporters are out there doing that as a candidate, you have a responsibility to denounce those kind of things off the bat as ridiculous, yeah. scurrilous, and get yourself away from those kind of people. Yeah. Um, you know, Damon Jones has been a, a, a hard-working person um, that's trying to deal with specific issues with police um, and, and his role um, as, as a leader in the organization, um, a national organization that tries to, to bring some attention and to correction for, for places where there's um, alleged police brutality, including increasing training techniques, etc. Damon Jones has a, a story to tell. Mm -hmm. um, it's really interesting that none of those folks um, are the principal candidates selected by the Mount Vernon Democratic Committee, where there are uh, two people running for re-election, uh, Roberto Puzo and Yana Edwards, mm -hmm. with the final person, Marcus Griffiths, who was appointed, Griffith, who was appointed um, previously to the city council of Mount Vernon and, and lost in a race, I guess, in 2009. So, uh, again, the party endorsed people right. uh, aren't in, involved in this fray at all. Mm -hmm. uh, this is really about, you know, part of the, the you know, the underbelly side. The of fringe, the fringe. Right? And, well, not only just the fringe, it's also the, the things with the, uh, the, uh, the legal machinery with the archaic Board of Elections process that we have where, you, again, you know, you have candidates going like out as, as cookie salespersons to get on the ballot, and then you have this whole process of objecting and knocking people off, blah, 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 blah. Right? You know, yeah. we, we need to, to straighten, uh, straighten that out. We need to straighten out some of those other issues. But the, the whole problem in Mount Vernon, D Damon Jones um, should be the kind of individual I know him to be, stand up forcefully, denounce these types of actions, and just get on with their primary next week and, and see where it goes. All right. Talking to Ken Jenkins, from, of course, the chairman of the County Board of Legislators at uh, 740 at 63 degrees. Uh, so uh, what else is going on? Uh, I uh, gave you my little question there. What, what's happening in your realm, sir? Well, what's happening, happening in my realm is that this week we found out that, uh, uh, that the Astorito administration in the budget plan that required or asked the Board of Legislators to approve $13 million of borrowing um, for pension courts, which was used in the, the budget, um, um, the Astorino budget that was presented and passed, that we don't need to do that, which is what the Democrats said from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So if we had $13 million of cash that was embedded in the budget, that we were going to be able to pay for our bills, we would be able to keep neighborhood health centers open, we would have been able to keep child care at 20%, we would have been able to retain the 50-something employees that they end up hiring over the last six months. You know, 
that's the kind of nonsense is that, that people need to understand more clearly about how the government is operating at the county level. No one needed to be hurt in the making of this budget. No family needed to have these things increased. Yeah, you have to make tough choices along the way, but sometimes it, one of the toughest choices is, well, we don't need to do this right now. We don't need to borrow money. We could have had a 0% tax levy, protected the services that the people of Westchester needed, not hurt individuals by laying them off and then hiring political hacks, and then at the end of the day, keeping neighborhood health centers open to do things like give out flu shots in neighborhoods that need it. Well, aren't those, aren't those health centers still open? No, they're not. Those health centers are still open, but they're not, they're not using county services. So those people are not getting served um, by those, those things. So if but, have, but, they're still getting, but they're still getting their shots and everything, right? Uh, uh, not, no, 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 no. They're, they're, they're not getting that information. They're not getting those services provided through the county. So they, wait, 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 wait. But, wait. They don't but they're getting the shots, right? Well, well, not only influ uh, flu shots, not right. only things like services that keep health care costs down so people don't go to the, the, uh, you know, the health center. They wait until they get really, really sick, and then they go to the, med they go to the emergency room if they go at all. So it's, it, it, this is, this is a, a, a long-term understanding and issue when the county used to run the neighborhood health clinics that we contracted them out right. worked with the state to develop this network so that that those services would then be provided by in the local community so people actually could get them. But wait, but, but again, I, I'm, and I'm not arguing, I swear to God, I'm not being a jerk. I'm just, I mean, I'm just trying to make, just once again, Ken, but those community, those, these, these health centers, nothing's been shuttered, right? I mean, everything's still open, right? Those health centers were running on their own. They were under contract with the county. Right. Um, that was a three for one match. So right. For the $2 million that we gave, they end up with $6 million worth of services that they could deliver to the municipalities right. and to the local communities. Now they don't deliver those services. It wasn't a question of the health centers shutting down. It was a question of people of low income right. being able to get services in their community and right. not having to travel here to and fro to get those same services. So, for example, the flu shots that are being given out for free, right. you have to go to White Plains or you can go to Yonkers, but if you're in Peekskill, so sad, too bad. If you're in New Rochelle, if you're in other places, those things don't happen. And people don't, uh, unfortunately, especially for something like preventative, like a flu shot, especially for our younger folks and our seniors that right. need those kind of things. You know what? Convenience does make a difference. So everyone doesn't have a car. Everybody can't take the two buses right. to get up to wherever, to White Plains that they have to spend three and four hours to travel back and forth. They can't afford to get off the two jobs that they have to do to pay, you know, their minimum, you know, minimum wage to make sure that they have food on their table and housing. Right. That's what county services are about. It's not always sexy. It's not always glamorous. It's always about trying to do the best we can with the dollars that we have. But the point I'm making is that if we had $13 million that was embedded in the budget, that's going to allow us not to have to use the budget smoothing that was provided to us by the state. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, that $13 million would have covered more than the things that I just mentioned. $2 mm -hmm. million dollars for neighborhood health centers, $3 million to keep ch uh, child care at 20%, right. and $5 million worth of patronage jobs that were buried in this budget. Okay. That's the issue. All right. Ken, you got to forgive me. i got to jump. Thank yeah. you, sir. Uh, thanks for shedding some light, and uh, we will talk to you next week. All right, TJ. We'll see you after primary day next week. Ooh, going to be exciting. Exactly. <laughs> talk to you later. Bye, buddy. There goes County Exe uh, There goes uh, County Board of Legislators, the chairman, Ken Jenkins. Fox News, ready in progress. Good morning, Westchester.